the 23rd day of August, um, November, I'm sorry, 2023. <laughs> take something, take seven, take eight or something, I lost track. Each one I lose 10 minutes or so. It's okay, I don't just, I feel this is going to be the lucky one. Is there such a thing as a lucky one? We will find out. Okay, so every nuclear scientist on the planet, include new scales nuclear scientists, when you see these, these are two reactors that Japan has the four that melted down, actual meltdowns. Not damaged, not destroyed, but nuclear meltdowns. They, they have their own class, their own category. And there wasn't a nuclear academic on the entire planet or scientist or nuclear journalist on the entire planet. And there wasn't a nuclear professor on the entire planet that didn't know those buildings, reactors were gone and the fuel pools were gone. They all knew that and they hid it from you, every one of them. Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Oxford, NYT, they all hid it from you. Every university, every nuclear industry, and new scale, of course. So these are the stumps of reactor three and four, which should have been leveled right to the ground. They were doing it all by remote control, and any homeless they can scratch up because nuclear scientists are not going to go there. So the buildings exploded. There's, there's nothing there. When you when any nuclear scientist looks at there, all the, there's no fuel pool, there's no reactor core. That's they know that. That's common sense to them. But you don't know much about it, so the average person doesn't understand. Certainly doesn't understand the implications of it. So reactor three and four, they put these contraptions on top of it. Instead of leveling it all the way down to the ground, they put them contraptions there so they can pretend that they're in the building that don't even exist, at the fuel pools. And the fuel pools are at the very top of the buildings, 195 foot, 65 meter, 19 story buildings. They're, they're not in the bottom. Those in particular are gone. Every every bit of it, it's gone. It was it was tossed right out of the buildings. And that this is France's model of the radioactive plume based on 20 days when the model stops. And it's only based on cesium-137 at 1 to 10 million becquels per cubic meter of air. These are catastrophic numbers for every species. There's no way the species can long-term survive this exposure. They'll all whittle and die, and you go too. And they know that. And so all they got to do is keep that propaganda going, and it's too late for anybody to do anything about it, and come up with a few fall, uh, a few straw man arguments to blame the die-offs on, like the bird flu and the rest of them. So th this is another model from Norwegian Institute of Air Research. Remember, this is a plume that covers the planet in about 19.5 days in that particular model. And it's pulsing energy at the speed of light every second. It gammas off as neutrons and betas for each of these. Think of a snowflake as a atom, an anthropogenic man-made atom. And each snowflake, think of it as a snowstorm covering the planet after 20 days. It never stops snowing. The snow never melts. And it's there for the next million years. Now flip it and call it invisible, but call it radiation. And that's a depiction of what happened. But it's actually worse. Because <clears throat> you can't put 20 million snowflakes in a liter of water, but you can with atoms. And 185, not 185,000, but 185, like the age of a turtle or um, certain whales, 185 would be an evacuation zone. This was coming down in rain at 220 million atoms, so I died 129 per liter. And the journalists reveled in manipulating you and deceiving you and downplaying every facet. And so did the useful idiots, the scumbag of the industries themselves. I've been stopped from doing live shows um, on August the 24th when Japan said they're going to be dumping water from buildings that don't exist, that have been gone for 12 years. And the only person out there objecting with the documentation and proving to everybody else, unfortunately... It's just, uh, just less than a handful of people. And I'm probably the most prolific. 
<clears throat> okay, so since new scale, investors all ran away, and thank goodness, they're now being sued. We got that story coming up. But when I covered the, the actual downfall, my video stopped getting any views after the premiering. So normally, if you got 25 people on the show, there's another 25 visitors that you'd get 50 views when the show was over. And so, because I'm censored down to nothing, so I got 21 thumbs up. That's 91 minutes that videos just ended. And this was my last news cycle show. My poll had 28 people came by and voted. When the video was over, it said I only had 10 views. But yet it said I had 21 likes. So one hour after, and now that's twice or three times we've seen this. And I'm assuming they're going to do it again tonight on this particular show to me. So when the show is over, go to my front page and see how many views I got. Then come back and look at the poll and look at the thumbs up and see if they match up. Because I can guarantee you they won't. So did New Scale, this was a poll two shows ago on the News Cycle part. Now I've been on a research expedition doing a species count this week. And we've covered huge distances. The last trip was we counted uh, one bird every 11 kilometers, basically. It's an extinction event, right? Now, we've done the research expeditions in the Pacific Ocean for six years from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska. So uh, now we're seeing on both ends of the continent. This is unassailable documentation. And I posted actual videos from the research, 30-minute and 22-minute video in this raw format. Unfortunately, I didn't put it in the highest quality. I thought the camera stayed in that uh, high quality. It, you have to set it every time you take the battery out, which is every time you use it, you're going to have to recharge the battery, right? And I uh, forgot to set the super high quality. I apologize. I'm pretty sure that won't happen again. So did no scale small modular reactors fail because it was just another nuclear scam to begin with. Yes. Yes, it did. And uh, by the way, this is take nine. It's shocking how many attempts I tried to get this show tonight. The last attempt, I forgot to turn the volume on. The last attempt, I forgot to turn the volume on. Nuclear is a nasty, nasty industry. Its whole legacy, if you understood the legacy of the nuclear industry, everybody you know understood it. You would be out there protesting constantly. And you, YouTube has worked hand in hand with the nuclear industry to hide this information. That's, that's Google, that's Alphabet, that's the nuclear industry. They just hate us. And they've done everything in the, you can imagine to stop you from having a future in order to promote this disgusting... This is the wrong equation, right? Einstein said he would never... And you don't have to be a genius to know that, that he was honest. Uh, everybody worldwide gets that, right? <coughs> Except for the nuclear industry. <coughs> so these are these are people in the university that were in their communities were misfits. They're outliers, and the industry scratched them up and trained them to be scum because they're naturally adapted at it. So please consider in my videos. It's very difficult to get the story out. I'm doing the best I can, and I'm bringing you documentation. Uh, you know, the nuclear industry created Spider-Man to lull you into complacency. Spider-Man written, bitten by a radioactive spider. So the kids growing up think of nuclear waste as maybe they can turn into a so-called hero when their grandparents are their hero. But their grandparents can't compete with the Hulk or Spider-Man or Wonder Woman or whatever these endless 
perpetual amounts of super. These are all the superheroes. So your your kids will never look at your grandparents or your aunts or your uncles or even their own family members as heroes because they can't compete. And then they muddle that whole equation with GoPro hero and, and, and guitar hero. To dilute the ability of your loved ones to be the apple in their eye. And you replace it then with these faults. So we got we got to hold these people accountable. There's a lot of people at new scale should be sitting in that chair for what they've done. And they denied the communities the ability to come up with solutions. And in the old days, we got rid of our problems. We didn't let us fester. We didn't let us get sore. We didn't come up with ex with fabled superheroes for distractions. We dealt with our problem. Get on with our lives. <laughs> Let's get on with our lives. Because New Scale and all the rest of the industry are busy trying to destroy your ability to have a life and your children to have a future and for the species to exist. The nuclear industry is the antagonist of humanity. Small scale nuclear power dealt a major setback. Small scale. Well, no, it wasn't dealt a setback. It doesn't even exist. You haven't even built a prototype. Once you build a prototype, then you got to get it through engineering, figure out the issues, re-engineer it and rebuild it. It'll be 30 years for, for it. There is no major setback. Geothermal actually exists. The company that made history with a small nuclear reactor became the first nation to receive a certification from the Non-Regulatory Commission, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, has canceled it due to financial reasons. The financial reasons were they invested in it, the Department of Energy cronies invested in it originally. They sucked the other investors to come in, and then they took their money and put it in their bank account. And that's called a Ponzi scam, and this is why it failed. And everybody knew that knew anything about this knew it was going to fail, except for the communities invested, which are now suing them. And if you're going to talk about small modular scale reactors, why are you showing a large reactor? And why are you showing a large reactor surrounded by farmland? Because these reactors are hemorrhaging radiation from the fuel pools with no containments into those farmlands all year long. That's why they build them in farmlands. The majority of nuclear power plants worldwide are in prime farmland. So they can move the radiation out and poison you at the same time. And I'm not exaggerating it. That's engineered in. New scale power, pioneer and small nuclear. They're not, they don't have built a reactor. They can't be a pioneer. They can't be experts in building small modular reactors and all the other lies we've been covering for five years straight because of the media attention this non-entity gets in order to suck in the investors. So... Department of Energy can use a Ponzi scam to make money. First U.S. commercial small... They weren't even trying to build one. They, they didn't even try to build one. No intentions. And lay any foundations. They literally didn't do any surveys. They knew it was going to flop. They knew there was no way they could pull it off. They didn't even try. 90% of the money goes to administration. If you're going to look, follow the money, it's the administration, right? 90% of the money went to the administration. So, so as soon as it flopped, they had other countries said, oh, well, we're going to use it to get investors to throw more money in it to try to pay off the ones they already ripped off to keep the Ponzi scam going. And then Nuclear Engineering International is a lobbying group. Everything they puts out there is propaganda. There's nothing there they put out there that's not propaganda. They're really degenerate, the most degenerate. And you'll never see their name on the story. They don't stand by their word at all. You'll never see their name on the story. Same thing with World Nuclear News. You won't see their name on a single story. It won't happen. And they're the first page of Google every time. Seoul National University opens New Scale Power Energy Exploration Center, which is privately funded, the first privately funded New scale energy exploration because they went bankrupt in America. They took the money, ran down to South Korea and other places, and privately funded the new scam to get investors to kick back to pay off the ones they just ripped off. That's their hope. That's what they're up to. That's why they done that to try to cover their bases. That's what they're up to. One hundred percent. You know it, and I know it. 
Newscale also hopes to send small modular reactors for cancel project to another customer. It wouldn't be canceled if they could do it, so they ain't going to send it anywhere. The reason it's canceled because they can't do it. That's why they cancel it. They can't send something when they don't even have it on top of that. It's a pathetic, it's, un, it's unbelievable that it exists, this industry. It's such a degenerate industry. There's no good ever come from nuclear. Six small nuclear modular reactors that new scale, and these are scumbags I've dealt with that harassed me by phone for years. These are degenerates. Plan to use it in a canceled generation project in southwestern U.S. could be diverted to another customer. You wouldn't divert it to another customer if you had a solution, if you already had one, would you? And the other customer is just going to be the next Ponzi scam. I want to take those modulars and move them over. You can't move something over that don't exist. Your customers ran away in the first place because they don't exist. You haven't built one, you haven't even tried. You got South Korea, you got some other place in the United States, and I can't remember the others. We covered the story over the last week, right? There was a third one. First U.S. commercial small nuclear reactor was axed. It was axed because it's a Ponzi scam. And uh, the nuclear renaissance suffered a blow. There is no nuclear renaissance. They never even tried to build one. Portland Nuclear Power Startup. Startup has been there for 18 years. I'm sorry, 19 years. It's not a startup. It's a Ponzi scam. Hit with investor lawsuit. Like all the nuclear companies in Portland, I've had too many contacts with, and these are snakes. They're the snakes in the tall grass, every one of them. Newscale recently canceled a partnership with Utah Power System. Yeah, how many communities was that they ripped off? Experts that don't have a single reactor. Why, why are you talking about? You can't be an expert when you don't have a reactor. Extra, experts believe you don't have a reactor, so you can't be an expert. And why are you quoting somebody in a story like this without using their name? Little bird told you? They're not looking for credibility, are they? They're looking for deceit and dishonesty and the muddle the water is what they're trying to do because the investors are coming for them. Small modular nuclear reactors have a bright future, maybe. You can't have a bright future when you don't exist. Investors have hauled a Portland-based degenerate nuclear power company that don't even have a reactor and has existed for 18 years by stealing 90% of the money going into administration. And that's siphoned off into their own banks. Into f and one of them told me he had 24 cars in his garage. He used to call me every, almost every two or three days from his house and pretended he was an investor originally. And he was going to invest in me in the research from British Columbia to Alaska and the research expeditions. And for claiming that the company missled them about a major project promised to usher in a new age of nuclear power. It's 100% true. They lied and manipulated and deceived, and the media helped them. New Scale Power Cancelly Partnership earlier the month with Utah Associated Municipal Power Systems. We've covered them since they've been public, and we were shocked when they went onto the public stock markets. That was terrifying. And we even try to warn people that this is 100% a scam. And that would have seen the first small modular nuclear reactor built in the United States, would have seen. And they were going to build it at a military site on top of that. The project called for six new scale reactors, which are just scaled down version of the current reactors, except using mixed oxide fuel, which is illegal, by the way, in America and most places worldwide, to be built at the U.S. Department of Energy Idaho National Laboratory. The deal collapsed earlier this month under the weight of rising interest rates and inflation, said New Scale. Yeah, but New, New Scale is going to lie anyway. There's no way they're going to tell you the truth. They had that all factored in. We've covered it for their whole uh, legacy. Inflation was, was, everything was scaled into it. 
They're the Department of Energy, for goodness sakes. Money shouldn't mean anything to them. It was about stealing the money, see? It's the government. They could have just took the money and threw the money out. They didn't. They decided to steal other people's monies because everybody's jumping on that bandwagon for the last five or six years. And we usually cover it five days a week. Year after year after year after year. The project called for six nuclear, new scale reactors. Now, so, like, they don't actually have the whole license in application, which is about a million pieces of paper, into the non regulatory agency, which is just a rubber stamp agency, full of the old dogs, the old uh, scum industry themselves. The deal collapsed earlier this month under the weight of rising interest rate, which is not true. According to New Scale, the project could have delivered nuclear power to 16 states. A gigawatt going into 16 states is not. It's just a 100% scam. It's a 100% scam. Every facet. And even the rendition, this is an artist's rendition he sat there with somebody at New Scale, and said, New Scale will draw it like, like some kind of uh, spaceship and give us some futuristic looks so it all looks nice and neat and put it right there by the river because you know they're going to pollute that with mixed oxide fuel for its entire legacy. In a class action lawsuit filed November the 15th, investor says New Scale made materially false and or misleading statements and failed to disclose material adverse facts about the company's business operations and prospects and they are seeking unspecified monetary damages to recoup their losses and interest and there is a number of u.s companies trying to perfect the technology what are you talking about you got to build one to even try to start perfecting it New Scale is the only small modular nuclear reactor design approved by the new U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. If they don't have the whole application in, or they would have said it right there. If they've, it's been widely acknowledged they don't have the whole application in. Again, totally misleading. Completely dishonest. Small modular reactors are more affordable to build and operate, but you can't quantify that assertion, and the reality of it is they're simply not. When you scale them up, they produce 35% more intermediate-level waste, 30% more high-level waste, and five times more fuel rods than a conventional reactor scaled up. It's literally stupid. They're literally stupid. You have to be, and you're using mixed oxide fuel, high SA, weapons-grade fuel. So every site is a threat to the community. And they want to be able to build it right in the community. They don't have any data because they've never built one. And the designs are based on the old reactors. They're not something new. But calling a new scale is simply not is a way of deceiving you on top of that. They're told it's being safer. How can you be safe when they don't exist? The traditional nuclear disease factories, in part because emergencies are easier to contain. <laughs> You're talking about mixed oxide fuel, for goodness sakes. Like, that's the hardest thing to contain. It's mixed oxide fuel. It's it's weapons grade fuel. It's, it's, it's the toxicity, the emissions are are, bru are brutal. You know, like the emissions are two billion times more toxic than industrial poison from a typical reactor. These things are two billion times, two billion times more toxic than industrial poison. Everything is a hot particle. And you take 200 million atoms put on the head of a needle, but you can't see them. But just one of that mixed oxide fuel atoms is enough to trigger an autoimmune disease, illness, autoimmune deficiencies, heart, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenal, all these is endless problems can be triggered. And ultimately, your body attacks with white blood cells every second for the rest of your life. And eventually, 10, 20, 30 years, they build a sarcophagus around it. You call it a tumor. Small modular reactors have capacity up to 300 megawatts, less than half of a large reactor. So two, two of them are as big as some large reactors. There's nothing small about that. 
The reason they build them big is because you needed them big in order to make a profit because these are incredible. Look, you got to have two gas oil and coal plants just to run these disease factories. They're hemorrhaging radiation into an environment. That's what it's surrounded by farms. And less than half of large, unlike large reactors, small modular reactors are constructed at a central location shipped to their final destination. Like, you're not going to construct something half the size of a current nuclear power plant, put it on a truck and ship it to somewhere, okay? I mean, they got all that in the same paragraph where they, they, they acknowledge that it's half the size of a large reactor and then claim they're going to put it on the back of a pickup truck and ship it somewhere. You should be outraged. You should be outraged that they still exist. It's outrageous that they actually exist. Their design means additional reactors can be added. No. Like, these are not... The small modular reactors completely... The whole context is completely different from what they just told you. Have you go look at a, go look up a nuclear power plant and envision putting that in the back of a pickup transport truck and bringing it somewhere. And give you a head a shake and when it falls off, give it a kick. The lawsuit claims New Scale withheld from the investors the proposed Idaho project wasn't financially viable after it failed to attract enough customers. Well, they, they need the customers to pay off the original investors. It's a Ponzi scam. Over the course of several investors' calls in 2023, New Scale executives, because they take 90% of the money, goes to administration, 10% goes to actual material, and they ain't got any material. Nothing but a scam for 18 years. New Scale Executive told his investors progress requiring the need a customer base was looking pretty good. Continue to make progress. Have a nice day. But you were talking about huge amounts of money. And you're talking about the communities. Instead of investing that money in geothermal, which would have been up and running right now, is now tied up in litigation. You might never see it. Time lawyers get used to cannibalizing it. But research published in October by Iceberg Research a short-selling firm specializing in revealing substantial earnings misrepresentation, accounting irregularities, contradicted that narrative, claiming no new customers had agreed to buy the nuclear power since March. Now, that's perfect. That's why we invented the electric chairs. Two hundred sixty-four counts per minute here. Let's see, one thirty-seven which is an evacuation zone, by the way, pre-Fukushima. The same report suggested a second plan, new-scale project supplying nuclear power. The two standard power data centers in Ohio and Pennsylvania stood little chance of success. And new-scale claimed the project would consist of 24 reactors producing 1,800 megawatts of power. 24 reactors. And... Uh, Everybody warned you for the last five years what New Scale was up to. If you're on the outside, you're looking in. It's unbelievably obvious. If you're paying any attention at all to the news cycle, and we covered it all, it's painfully obvious what they're up to. It's a Ponzi scam in every sense of the word. And they've been doing it now for 80 years. And so they figured, and they're probably right, they'll get away with it again here. They need the power like last year. These guys are building data centers. They need it now. New Scale Chief Commercial Officer told investors in October, we're going to start work right away. Again, researchers with Iceberg called fell. And we got reports of New Scale building some infrastructure. And then when the media went away, they tore it all down. <laughs> Sold it to somebody else. This contract is zero chance of being executed. The standard power clearly does not have the means to support contracts of this size. So, hopefully a whole bunch of them goes to jail. These are the scum of the scum. They, and we, it was painfully obvious, every one of these uh, small, and they're supposed to be the shining light of the nuclear industry, of the small modular reactors. And all the media then, all the different bootlickers came out and said they're going to promote small nuclear reactors right away to try to, to prop up this fabled Ponzi scam. 
Based on statements, the Standard Power's website report said that the company's demand for electricity was dramatically lower than what New Scale said it was delivering. And in a statement, the hugest New Scale's vice president of marketing and communication, perpetual lawyer, we calls her, called the plaintiff serial litigants, lit litigants, repeating false misleading claims does not make them true. He said the company will vigorously defend itself in proper form. New, well, New Scale is part of energy. That's what you expect them to say, isn't it? New Scale stock has fallen 60% since April, August. So it's down to 40% of what it was. So they bought it all up now at 40%, and they're going to try to prop it back up, and they get investors to come in so they can sell their shares again. See? So it's coming. They're, they're, they, this is what they do. They don't care. They don't care about anything. They just care about ripping off the community stupid enough to blink at small modular reactor fable. You shouldn't invest nothing into them until you build the model. And they had plenty of opportunities and plenty of money to do it. So why didn't they do it? Because they're stealing 90% 90, 90 of the money goes to administration. It's like that with all nuclear. Here's another story that just came out. U.S. military quietly revokes the planned contract for small nuclear plant at Alaska's Air Force Base. Quietly. You know why? Because cause they can't build one. No sense wasting your time and your money and your effort, your energy, and on something that's not going to happen. And you could have done all it. All of this could have been already finished with geothermal. If they had to decide to go geothermal, this would have already been done, already up and running. Same thing with everybody invested in New Scale. If they had took the money and put it in geothermal, they'd be laughing for the next hundred years. Letter, no emissions claims mar Saskatchewan Power's webinar on nuclear power. And again, this is meant to prop up new scale with different stories about small modular reactors, right? A reader commented that a presentation by Saskatchewan Power, which is here in Canada, on small modular re nuclear reactors failed to include information about nuclear emissions. And again, like it's like they took a, a ice cream container, flipped it upside down, and put a windmill and a door on it. It's just a rendition of uh, General Electric Hitachi. Why would you trust him after what they done? This, if they did build a small modular reactor, it would never look like this site here. It would have nothing to do with it. His otherwise informative webinar, webinar, webinar was marred by a statement that the boiling water reactors 300 would have no emissions. Uh, they're, they're doing that. They've been doing that. That's been a real push for at least six years. Longer than that, I know. But the biggest push we've seen now is the last six years. And, you know, we see it every day constantly. And really claim there's no emissions. People may not know everything about nuclear power plants, but most of us know that tritium or hydrogen, well, just actually tritium 3H, is created and released in planned or unplanned episodes. It could build up and cause an explosion. And tritium, no, like in the Canadian re can do reactors are disease factors. Like 16 million trillion atoms a year being released. It blows away like Europe's tritium releases by magnitudes of many orders. Tritium is radioactive hydrogen combined with oxygen forms radioactive water and has been described as a weak beta emitter, but its particles can't be stopped by paper or skin. No, it, it'll go, because it, it's water, it soaks right through your skin, gets in your blood system, and starts pounding all your cells, your chromosomes, your DNA, with beta pulses almost at the speed of light every second. Your body has to repair everything, and it can't keep up with that kind of energy. And I really just, I, re I really think when, he, when you see that framing there, it can be stopped, the emission, like sort of pulse of energy, what you're talking about, paper can stop it. But because it's in the form of water, 
right? It becomes organically bound when it's in your body. And then the pulses are wrecking everything in every direction, every second for your entire life. And your body has to repair all of that, plus it has to try to build a sarcophagus around the emission itself. But at the same time, it has to flood that area for the rest of your life. And for every white blood cell, you're displacing a red blood cell with carry oxygen and nutrition. And so you're, you're permanently deprived of that, that nutrition and that oxygen. But your body has to repair it every second. And it, it's not like a cut on your finger where after seven days it heals. This is forever. Eventually it builds a tumor there. But because it's destroying all the chromosomes and the DNA and the cells with each pulse, if you get a lot of it into your body, you're producing so much white blood cells, they call that leukemia. Our bodies incorporate hydrogen in every cell and cellular structure in our bodies. Our bodies are unable to distinguish between a normal hydrogen atom and tritium. It means that every atom, tritium atom we ingest into our body could spontaneously decay into a helium, a gas. No, it pulses energy every second at the speed of light. It pulses energy every second at the speed of light for 120 years. Yeah, it decays every 12 years to another uh, isotope, but what well, it's dishonest or factually wrong to use it the way they're doing it. As the tritium decays, which is every 12 years, it emits energy that can oxidize cellular contents, including RNA and DNA and genetic material. Many believe the tritium is the culprit in increase in childhood. Children develop in leukemia close to nuclear power plants. <clears throat> Let me show you why that's happening. It's, it's, re it's really simple, actually. You'll enjoy this. Hang around. Why do children near nuclear disease, nuclear power plants, we formerly known, or should be permanently known as nuclear disease factories, the fuel pools, each building reactor has two fuel pools. That's where they're storing decades of reactor cores. And so all nuclear power plants sit for a few surrounded by farms. See the houses up there? They're hemorrhaging, right? see the tall stack? That's hemorrhaging radiation 24 hours a day from the fuel pools. The fuel pools are full of reactor cores. Reactor cores are still splitting atoms. The same amount, each reactor core, and it could be five or six per fuel pool, each reactor core is producing the same atoms would for a million homes, except there's no containment. This is why they're surrounded by farms. This is why they build them in prime farmland. And as you start looking, you start realizing that almost every nuclear power plant on the planet almost every nuclear power plant on the planet is surrounded by farms. Like, this is not an accident. This is engineered. All nuclear power plants didn't accidentally build themselves in the farmland. This is their attempt, at, and successfully, I might add, attempt at genocide. So when you look at all nuclear power plants, what you start realizing is they're all surrounded by farms and fresh your fresh water for all your communities downstream. And at 50 becquels a kilogram, children see irreversible heart damage. But you put 200 million... Beckles, each beckle is an atom. The pulse, a beckle is the pulse of energy every second, and that's from an atom. And there's 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. So how do you separate, How do you identify 50 when you can't see 200 million of them? And by the way, Geiger counter is not going to measure anything on a gamma. So in Japan, they got 30 million one-ton bags picked up, but they're growing food right alongside of millions of one-ton bags of radiation in, in a country where 14 prefectures were banned, the food was banned by 55 countries for a decade because of radioactive fallout. But yet in Japan, in Fukushima, right by the nuclear reactors, within a few miles of it, in ghost towns, they still grow food right alongside of millions of one-ton bags of radiation because this is what they've been doing for 80 years. And the industry doesn't understand good from bad or, or right from wrong. They don't. They can't comprehend that that there, there's a limitation. 
and that they know how the food sucks up radiation because there's endless studies. So why are they growing food alongside of almost every nuclear power plant on the bloody planet? By the way, cesium, which is just one of the many, 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 many a thousand fission products you got to worry about, getting that's the deceit. Now, it's a very bad isotope, but that one gets all the traction. The biggest byproduct of radiated fuel rods is the curium isotopes, and curium isotopes need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium, which is named after the devil. Nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms, but they got tons of studies saying that that's the stupidest thing you could possibly do. And it's not just cancer. It's heart and liver and lung and respiratory and pituitary and thyroid and adrenaline. There's endless diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries. And your body now is contaminated, so you're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless and innocuous and benign. And why would you grow all this food right alongside of it when all you got to do is look up the studies to see how what happens? And it shows every direction you look, the food and the plants will suck up the radiation. So it's, it's incredible to see all these nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms. Don't you agree? Sixteen thousand workers have quit. These are not academics or scientists, engineers. These are the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society and immigrants who don't speak the language. Nuclear scientists are not going to Fukushima. <coughs> so this company has won a four billion euro order for a French next generation nuclear plants. Well, four, four billion euros is not going to, like, the EDF, France's um, government owns EDF, the majority, if not all of the shares now. And they can't build a single reactor for $30 billion. How are they going to build a whole bunch, six, for four billion? Because that's what, this company, because that's, that's how they trick you, right? Oh. Oh, it's only $4 billion. That seems pretty good. $30 billion later, they're still trying to get the kinks out of it. F 15 years behind schedule. To carry the main civil engineering work surrounding two nu planned nuclear reactors. So just the engineering, it's going to be $4 billion. The final tag will be so expensive. And because uh, renewables now are just wrecking everything out there, and it's been held back every step of the way, but the minute you looked at geothermal is the minute you, you decide nuclear is stupid. You come to your senses and realize how stupid nuclear actually is. For each reactor, they're going to build several dozen of the buildings, including joint concrete domes containing a reactor. The turbine hall is a six-level operation building. The deal would be for the EPR2 reactor, state-owned utility EDF is building at the Pendley site, which most of the reactors are shut down, right, right now because of their uh, corrosion and everything, will involve almost 4,000 people to generate 1.3 million working hours. It's the most resource-intensive industry in history. And these plants we're talking about need their own dedicated-ass oil, gas, and coal plants to build them to run them and for 60 to 100 years later decommission them. To call them uh, resource free, in, it's insane. A preparatory work are due to start in 2024 once EDF has obtained all necessary permits to kick off the construction. They don't have the manpower, they don't have the, the supply chain. They, they can't fulfill the orders they already got. They can't even complete the reactors that they're currently building in different countries, right? That are over a decade behind schedule. But because there's a strong pro-nuclear uh, industry in, in France, the posturing is there. But the reality of it is they're so, they're so disconnected, so much, you know, 90% of the money goes to administration. It's almost impossible for them to do anything the first ten billion dollars is traditionally is always stolen. This 
dismantling of California San Ofre nuclear disease factory is more than 60% complete. More than 60% complete. Um, you got any idea how much radiation they're releasing from this place? I think we got some figures here. And dismantling is more than 60% complete. It's uh, $4.7 billion. $4.7 billion to take down the old plant. <laughs> it's re so resource free, it makes me sick. That's, that's carbon free, that's what they call carbon free, right? Oh, you know, for, they're carbon free, they don't produce any pollution. Uh huh. From what we're seeing, that's all it does is produce pollution. They're one great big stupid disease factor on top of that. Started in October 2020 and scheduled to finish by 2028. Typically, it takes 60 years. 80% of the material is presumed to be radioactive. I looked to get the Arrigans to actually acknowledge it. 80% of the material, which is almost a billion pounds, <laughs> is radioactive. They'll, they'll try to recycle that in the kids' toys, radioactive kid toys, radioactive uh, cooking utensils for the dollar shops. And yeah, 1.1 billion pounds. 80% of the material is presumed, not presumed, is bombarded with gammas and x-rays and neutrons for its entire legacy. A billion pounds. Make sure we do it safely and keep everyone out of harm's way. That's my major job, he said. Like... All they're doing is spraying the dirt down to stop it from uh, turning into dust and contaminating the local communities any more than they have been for the last 60 years. Class C and B low-level waste will get sent to a site near the town of Andrews in West Texas. Remember the controversies around that. Non-radioactive material. Everything is radioactive, by the way, that comes off that site. We'll go to Las Vegas for recycling or a landfill in Arizona, a landfill. Uh, if it's recyclable, it wouldn't be going in a landfill. There's nothing on a nuclear site should be recycled, nothing. Not a single thing on that site should be recycled, reused again. 80% of it is radioactive. And when you decommission it and tear it down, the rest of it becomes radioactive by proxy. Because there's no incentive. Like, you can't contain the radiation. It's radiation. Give me 5,500 train car loads ultimately. So, the train car loads, a lot of these are open. So they're driving through your communities and through your forests and estuaries and oil country. And all the radiation is dust is blowing off into those areas, into the water tables, into the communities that they're going through. And the industry knows that. The, the industry is counting on it. That's part of the equation. That's engineered in. Because the internal parts, that's why they're surrounded by uh, farms, because they just don't care. They actually hate your guts. And the internal parts were close to the nuclear fuel. Those components are very radioactive means the process of cutting and retrieving the pieces is done underwater. So that water is going to be brutal radiation. That will be boiled off into the communities when no one's looking. Because it's radioactive, you need to shield yourself from it. Water is an excellent shield. Yeah, but water evaporates, and anybody that's breathing in those emissions or any farms, they're all surrounded by farms, those emissions are go travel a long distance, see? It's tough to get machinery to be reliable underwater. It's a complicated design, a lot harder to operate, and you're using remote operations, underwater cameras, manipulators, and things like that. Yeah, where does the water end up? They claim they can filter it, and then it's just, you can go ahead and drink it. Working, and which is silly. 
and criminal. Work in the reactor cavities were 96% done. When finished, hundreds of thousands of gallons of water would be purified to the level of acceptable drinking water so they can be safely discharged into the ocean. So let's think about that. You put 200 million atoms in the head of a needle, but you can't see it. The anthropogenic man-made deadly radioactive atoms. And the head of a needle, you can't see it. So how are you going to filter that out? Because you've got to contain everything. You, you can't release water because the water can't be filtered. You can't filter that out. It can't be, you can't purify radioactive water, by the way. It's literally one of the most dishonest framing of a narrative that you can imagine to suggest that you can purify radioactive water. Where's the science? Where, where, where's, where's the evidence that you can do it? Because I can guarantee if you had evidence, they would have showed it a long time ago. Hundreds of thousands of gallons is going to be an absurdly amount more than that. You got any idea how much evaporates each day from this? Because the internal parts were close to the nuclear fuel, the components are radioactive. When finished, the hundreds of thousands of gallons will be purified and dumped into the estuaries and lakes and rivers and streams because you can't purify it. It doesn't work that way. That's, that's a word that shouldn't be in this story anywhere whatsoever when it comes to nuclear. Once the dismantlement is complete, all that is expected to remain at San Ofre plant will be two dry storage facilities, a security building with personnel to look over the nuclear waste, a seawall 28 feet high is measured at average low tide of San Ofre Beach, which is a disease factory, and a walkway connecting two beaches north and south of the plant in the switchyard with power lines. And if you lose power, the thing starts to melt down. The dry storage facility at the north end of the plant houses canisters filled with 3.55 billion or a million pounds of spent nuclear assemblies dating from the time of San Ofre generated electricity. 3.5 million pounds of spent nuclear as fuel assemblies, reactor cores. That's all splitting atoms. And a lot of these are vented. All the fuel pools that they were in are all vented directly into the environment. There is no containment. So 60 years of emissions, perpetual emissions at every nuclear power plant. And because it never goes away, it's the very epitome of what global warming actually is. Invisible snowstorms pulsing energy covering the entire planet for 80 years. That's global warming. Kills the bacteria and the fungus in the forest. The forest don't soak up water anymore. You expect to see huge uh, flash uh, storms. One storage facility contains 73 stainless steel canisters been lowered in vertical cavities. The other holds 50 canisters that are stacked horizontally. Until there's a place to send all the canisters with the two storage facilities from them, San Ofre will not be considered fully decommissioned. Because in the case of the nuclear power plants across the entire country, the federal government has not found a permanent repository to store the roughly 89,000 metric tons of waste that are built up over the deck is commercial. These are all splitting the atoms in 35 different states. They're still splitting atoms. All Most of this is in fuel pools, by the way. Yucca Mountain, and they got to add 120,000 liters to each fuel pool. Yucca Mountain, look, was based up on how much heat it can hold for 200 years. And one of the tricks they were trying to do was they're going to fill Yucca Mountain up with air conditioners to lower the temperature in order to use Yucca Mountain. But Yucca Mountain, there was $20 billion, and that was must have been 10 years ago, there was over $20 billion spent at that point on litigation. Yucca Mountain was the stupidest idea imaginable. Why would you put it in a mountain? Yeah, and like, there are deep geological repositories, but the problem is if one of them melts down, the whole bundle, the whole site melts down. And then you can't, you got to go find another planet. 
putting it all in one place is the stupidest thing imaginable. It, at some point in the future, that will melt down. Putting it deep underground just means it's going to melt down. Eventually, it'll consume everything above it. It doesn't need oxygen when it melts down. So eventually, it consumes everything above it. And if it comes in contact with water, that water, depending on uh, when it happens, at what point, when it does happen, though, that'll split the earth, and then the emissions will come up from the earth forever. And it'll split it in many places. We've seen that at Fukushima. And the steam coming out of the ground is at over 10 sieverts per hour. These are the lethal doses. You walk through that, you drop dead. Right on the spot. The 4.5 billion dismantlement project will be paid from a decommissioning fund collected through the ratepayers. So the ratepayers had to pay all this extra money so they can decommission it later. And a lot of that is going to be stolen, obviously. A leak in the steam generator in 2000 tubes in 2012 led to the closing of the plant. So how long was it leaking before they admitted it is the, one of the biggest questions. How many people did they pollute with that? Why well, Indian Point Nuclear Disease Factory, a.k.a. nuclear plant, won't close until 2041. Well, first off, the, the plant, Indian Point, let me see if I can find it. This is quite the eye-opener. I'm pretty good at this, but I was so broken up yesterday I could barely move. We were out on the trails looking for birds in particular, but also fish, also migratory birds, and it was dismal. There we go. Did you get lucky? Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Indian Point, like, get a load of this. How nuclear kills fish. Indian Point. One of Indian Point's reactors sits atop a fault line, by the way. And the aging plants have a devastating impact on the environment and the surrounding fish populations. Environmental analysts in the two states have found these facilities kill around 17 billion fish each year in New York and another 9 billion in New Jersey. And that the National Marine Fisheries Service found that the ones through cooling systems, which is a million gallons per minute for each reactor, are vacuuming up trillions of newly hatched fish and destroying them in their heat exchangers. So imagine a thousand small modular reactors doing the same thing all of a sudden. How can you have a future, right? They're strong, and like there's, this is all the different ways that this single plant, Indian Point, kills fish, and it's applicable than every other nuclear plant. There's strong evidence to, to suggest that the decline in fish stocks along the entire northeast Atlantic seaboard is due more to the destruction of baby fish than the overfishing of the adults by the commercial fleets. An Indian Point plant on the Hudson River sucks in 2.5 billion gallons of water every day, and they have the nerve to say they're carbon-free. It kills about 2 billion juvenile and mature fish a year in the screens, in the thermal plumes. And the NRC estimated that more than 300 billion baby fish are killed each year when they're sucked into the 40-foot wide intake pipes. So these are just disease factories surrounded by farms, and they destroy the ecosystem with their heat and with their pumps and with their exchangers. So back to why Indian Point nuclear plant won't close until 2041. New York decided to ban the discharge of radiological water into the Hudson River. We'll add another eight years to the timetable for tearing down Indian Point. Right, which is Chris Singh got the contract for it. Holtec in it. They're, they're despicable. What they got done is, the only way to describe them is just despicable, hateful scum. New York's decision to ban the discharge of the radiological water. Now, they, they, each, each, they're talking about the fuel pools. Each fuel pool worldwide, and there's a, currently I think it's 410 nuclear reactors, 
but each reactor has two fuel pools. Each fuel pool boils off about 120,000 liters a day into the environment, and each liter is saturated with trillions of isotopes, anthropogenic man-made dangerous ones, because the reactor fuel is still splitting the atoms. And because it's gone through a chain reaction, uh, it's full of trillions of microscopic cracks. So the amount of releases from the fuel rods into the water and then by proxy the water evaporation is, is a plume covering the entire planet all the time. New Jersey-based yeah, Holtec said the bulk of the decommissioning for the 60-year-old and plant won't be finished until 2041 because they need to make a profit, right? That's what it's all about. Holtec said the law signed by Governor in August to prevent the company from going ahead with plans to release a million gallons of radiological water used to cool nuclear fuel. Well, in order to cool the fuel, all it does is the fuel sits in the water, it's splitting atoms. They have to add 120,000 liters a day because that's how much boiled off at the average of, of each fuel pool, and there's around a thousand of them worldwide each day. And they're they're completely saturated. They're, each liter is a dirty bomb. Holtec said a lot disrupted the company's 10 to 12 year teardown plan, normally takes 60 years, and will lead to layoff of workers hired to cut. These are usually transient workers to cut apart the reactors once the water is empty. Well, like, Nuclear scientists are not going to work at that. Nuclear engineers are not going to work there. That's going to be the immigrants and, and the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society because immigrants are not going to work there. Holtec, which had told his ability to knock years off labor-intensive nuclear disease factory teardowns, is being paid at more than $2 billion ratepayer finance decommissioning trust fund. So if they do a good job, there's no money left over for profit. So the only solution they can come up with is just to dump and dispose of in landfills or directly into the rivers or oceans. Because you can't make a profit if you do the real job. In fact, you can't actually decommission that for $2 billion. So the only way you can make a profit is you've got to cut every corner, and that means nuclear emissions in particular. Indian Point was the village's biggest taxpayer for decades. Yeah, it's the Stockholm Syndrome, financing roughly half the village $7 million budget. And uh, Knickerbocker said the state had failed to consider potential health hazards from keeping radiological water stored in tanks at the Indian Point. So what they're trying to do is say, well, you've got to dump it into the into the... Hudson River, because, you know, people at the site will get sick if you leave it there, which that's the mission of the danger, obviously. But the reality of it is they've been dumping it for 60 years. And so because people finally went, hey, wait, what, you're going to dump it into the river? But that's what's been going on the entire time, its entire legacy. So you had all these protesters and a politician signed the bill so you can't dump it. He said the river should not be a dumping ground for the environment, the waste, which has been, that's what they've been doing for 60 years there. Holtec, Chris Singh, which is the very last person anybody on the planet should ever trust, said the radiological content of water to be released into the river in batches would be below acceptable standard levels by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. But the Regu Nuclear Regulatory Commission Standards, there is no standard. Everything's a rubber stamp. <sighs> the plant's previous owner released the water into the Hudson during the decades has been in operations. During the 60 years, there's 120,000 liters from each fuel pool boiled off into the community and the ecosystem every friggin' day from each reactor fuel pool and multiple fuel pools. There's two fuel pools per reactor. And they're both stuffed with reactor cores because they don't have a repository anywhere on the planet. The NRC regulations call for decommission to be finished in 60 years, not 12 years. 60 years. So the current timetable wouldn't violate federal standards.
So Holtec says they can do it in 12 years because you'll stop looking after two. Holtec said a lot of disrupted the company's 10 to 12 year teardown plan, but the actual NRC says it, it should take 60 years to decommission these disease factories if you're going to do it right. And if you're going to cheat and you're going to pollute the whole environment, you can do it in 12. Um, is this the Philippines? I can't remember. Fast breeder reactor in India. So India has a fast breeder reactor. Most of them have melted down that they've tried worldwide. They're usually considered the experimental reactors, right? But India figures that it can reclaim enough plutonium from the breeder reactor to make fuel for seven or eight more reactors. In order to separate it and do it, though, the, the emissions into the environment are catastrophic for all species worldwide. They're catastrophic, what they're doing. That's why the breeder reactor didn't work any rules. Storing the most dangerous material on Earth, how modeling is unlocking the potential of nuclear power. So, like, modeling can't possibly articulate because they're not going to put, right, they're not going to put all the nasty stuff in there, the actual emissions. This year, leaders from around the world met at the International Atomic Energy Agency Scientific Forum. Like, they shouldn't exist, the International Atomic Energy Agency. Like, they're claiming nothing got out of Fukushima, only two grams of tritium. How can they still exist? Because corruption is complete right across the board. And they're the worst, the worst human has to offer. Just, we've been covering these people for so long. It's frightening how corrupt they actually are. Radioactive waste from nuclear power plants have been one of the most significant environmental challenges of recent decades. No, for 80 years. Spent fuel from nuclear reactors remain highly radioactive and dangerous for hundreds of thousands of years. But they're split, once it comes out of the fuel, it's splitting atoms. Forever. That's why that's they're dangerous. That's the problem with the so-called nuclear waste. And there's many versions of nuclear waste, by the way. But they're still splitting atoms all day, every day, on a scale that the average person couldn't possibly comprehend. You're talking about invisible snowstorms covering the entire planet forever. Long past the human experience. And you're talking about 420 plants doing that worldwide from a thousand, not talking about the government's reactors and the military reactors and the university reactors and and the uh, think tanks reactors and whoever else can get their hands on one. And you're not talking about all the rogue countries like Canada or United States or China or India or Pakistan or is scumbag Israel. Highly radioactive and dangerous. Identifying new ways to store nuclear waste. So this, our team at Queen Mary have designed new ways to overcome the computational weaknesses. And for the first time, our high-performance algorithms can model systems with high energy collisions to create realistic, creative, realistic models, real-world nuclear encapsulation materials. Like the Canadian Bruce Power, I think it is, here in Canada, that, or the Nuclear Waste Management Organization, which is the nuclear industry, and they got $28 billion. And so they got this couple of scientists. Well, they got a degree. That don't mean they're, they have any attributes of a human in them. But they got a degree. And they claim that if they put one, what is it, uh, a millimeter of copper on the cast, that the, the cast wouldn't break down for a million years. Like, it's, it's such a ludicrous claim. It's hard to believe that people actually would say something like that. But that's the, whenever you think it's impossible for somebody would tell a lie that big, go look at the nuclear industry. And that's all you're going to find there. It's a lie so big nobody else would say it, but the nuclear industry would be happy to use it. And then, call, and then hide behind the word science. Has influenced international policies on nuclear material. 
Their codes have unlocked deficiencies and scalabilities that have influenced international policies. In other words, they're just basically a lobbying group for nuclear industry. Like New Scale, they're making claims that they can't back up, and then that's used to set precedents in countries for material that doesn't even exist in order to make the industry look feasible. It's strictly about making the nuclear industry look half human when it's ludicrous to suggest that it is. For example, UK National Nuclear Laboratory is using the team's algorithms. Like UK National Nuclear Laboratory is the very last organization on the planet that anybody should trust. Like their legacy is so dismal to further their interest in the use of ceramics as safe casing material for radioactive waste. The problem with the nuclear industry is they got all the wrong people working there. Everybody's there is the inbreeds of inbreeds. And until you get rid of them, you're never going to come up with a solution because they're all going to be playing on their the inbreed solutions, which was 90% of the money goes to administration and they steal it. Coming up with solutions is not a way to make money. If successful, this can provide a low cost and more sustainable storage alternative for nuclear waste, if successful. Again, these are conjectures. It's just strictly an opinion, and opinion doesn't is not science. It's nowhere near science. It's a straw man's argument, and that's what they always use is the straw man argument. Right? So you don't come up with solutions because people don't realize that the problems actually exist. UK National Nuclear Laboratory is using the team's algorithms to further their interest in the use of ceramics. The UK Atomic Weapons Establishment, the AWE, is also using our code to access and safeguard the UK nuclear deterrent, improving its storage of nuclear materials. So they're using a code that don't have any foundation whatsoever, only a conjecture behind it, an opinion. And lastly, the International Atomic Energy Agency, which claimed nothing got out of Fukushima, only 2.2 grams. Out of four nuclear reactors that melted down. Like the International Atomic Energy Agency should have come out and said, they are not in the fuel pool. And until the International Atomic Energy comes out and says that they are not in the fuel pool at reactor four, you have... You are insane to trust anything they say. You're insane. You'd have to be insane to trust anything they say. Because they're the ones that sanctioned this. That can't happen without the International Atomic Energy Agency making it happen. So they are not your friends. They are 100% your enemy. The International Atomic Energy is a genocide machine. Celebrating 60-year American Nuclear Society Savannah River like Savannah River, how many billions of dollars did they spend on their MOX facility there? And they had something like $2 billion worth of material when they canceled it, just sitting there piled up. And they gave it away to, to different organizations and different communities surrounding them, rather than sending it to another disease factory to be reused. And only the only material that they'll use is usually the best grade available, period, and that everything's inspected three or four times by different agencies. So the resources and the monetary put into these disease factories is stunning. It's all, it's all about stealing the money so you can't have a future. It's all about not coming up with solutions so to keep you in the same cycle. Former RAF nuclear bomber turned airborne fueling, refueling station, Lusty Linda, to return to Yorkshire Aviation Museum 30 years since its arrival. They got tons of money for anything nuclear, right? It's really something, isn't it? To commemorate 30 years since a nuclear bomber turned airborne refueling station will return to the Aviation Museum. They got endless money to throw at nuclear, and, there, and there's over 9,000 industries. And it's just destroying everybody and all the species on the planet. It's all nuclear. That's nuclear's legacy now. It has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. 
the ICC World Cup final, the NDRF deployed to respond to nuclear and chemical emergencies. And you see this with all the big events in America and Canada, where the nuclear industry shows up with the sniffer planes and everything else, helicopters flying over, sniffing for radiation so the, ter ter the terrorists don't get you. That's the indoctrination like Spider-Man and the Hulk, see? It's not about terrorists, it's about indoctrination. And so how much influence have you got when you can do this at all the Indianapolis 500s, the big football games, the big soccer games, and it's strictly about brainwashing? United Nations on the 78th anniversary of its creation. It shouldn't exist, right? It was formerly known as League of Nations. And when it changed its name to United Nations, post Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the first thing it done was went and used more ammunition, more, more munitions, more bombs, than was used in the entire World War II on North Korea. They used napalm, which is like a jelly gasoline that sticks to your skin and burns right to the bones. The napalm, every village, every community in the entire country of North Korea, millions dead, millions missing, millions in refugee camps, millions unaccounted for. And now over 70 years, land, sea, and air embargoes, the country has no idea what freedom is. Last time it's seen, well, Japan occupied it for 50 years up to that point, and, and when Japan lost the war from the Hiroshima and Nagasaki, North Korea was finally free, and instead, then the United Nations called it a police action and punished the civilians and, and every community. We burnt down every community there to punish a dictator, a leader. They punished every civilian in the country, and now permanently for generations. And it's used to, 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 to make you ter fearful that North Korea was going to bomb you. There's people out there building bomb shelters because you watch the media thinking North Korea is going to bomb them. Because United Nations is 195 militaries. They shouldn't exist. They've taken over your planet and their, their subsidy companies, the World Health Organization, the World Trade Organization, UNICEF, for goodness sakes, UNICEF. You got an organization with 195 militaries that destroy the children and the communities, and then they come in and play the savior. Can you imagine how actually evil you really are when you do that? Any concept of how evil this organization actually is? The Declaration of the Rights of Children from UN. They're, they're just degenerate people. They, they work there on top of that. Born from the ashes of World War II. United Nations is a commitment to peace and cooperation and the betterment of the shared world, a beacon of hope and unity on the global stage. It's the furthest thing from the truth. It's the complete opposite of what they're actually the most disgusting, parasitic organization in human history. Speaking of parasites, John LaForge, Uh, if you look at my site, the Monticello Reactors in Minnesota, you'll get the real story. You won't get it from John. Now John John claims the Fukushima reactors partially exploded. Partially exploded. Melted down. He claimed a now stopped leak. You can't prove it stopped. I really dislike that fel this fella. He called it a partial meltdown, partial explosion. A partial explosion. Let's, let's investigate that. I sent him pictures, and he didn't believe the pictures. So he thinks they're partial explosions, you know? Does, does reactor four and reactor three look a partial explosion to anybody? It's a partial explosion. 
तेन One thing we know for certain is that the nuclear industry has a lot of controlled opposition. High court rejects damages claims against the government over the meltdown. The high court, Japanese high court, the Nagoya High Court on Wednesday rejected a damage claim against the Japanese government by evacuees who fled Fukushima prefecture due to the March 2011 triple meltdown. With four meltdowns and eight fuel pools. Each fuel pool had around five reactor cores in it, for goodness sakes. They melted down. In the lawsuit, 100 plaintiffs who evacuated to other prefectures in, in central Japan demanded a total of 528 million yen, which is not very much money. Is four or five million dollars U.S. or something from the government and plant operators saying they were deprived of their peaceful lives because of a nuclear accident triggered by a huge earthquake and tsunami. Well, they built it. Where there's a three thousand year history of uh, tsunamis, and uh, and a million year history because they're right on the tectonic plates. Plates, they're they're literally only thirty five miles away from the tectonic plates. You have thousands of earthquakes a year. Why would you build it there? The they determined that the meltdown could not have been prevented, even if the government had ordered TEPCO to take safety measures. Well, no, you shouldn't have built it there. So it is guilty because you shouldn't have built it there. In the lawsuit, one hundred and twenty plaintiffs who evacuated got twenty-eight million yen. Which is equal to four point eight million dollars, which is nothing. They got around ten thousand dollars a piece, was it? The original was they wanted seventy five million, but they ended up at nine thousand dollars each, if you don't pay the lawyer. And you're going to be paying the lawyer, I guarantee you that. So they probably ended up at a thousand dollars each. They found the government was able to foresee the major tsunami by the end of 2022. The judge did, based on long-term seismic risk assessment released by the government's institution the same year, but determined that the meltdown could not have been prevented, even if the government had ordered TEPCO to safety measures to take safety measures. Well, the meltdown definitely could have been avoided. All you had to do was not build it in an earthquake and tsunami zone, because you knew that was going to happen at some point. Japan assures new plant wastewater discharges won't take taint the seafood. <clears throat> well, let me say this much: seafood is the last thing you better worry about. They're, they're, each of those prefectures, fourteen of them, were banned by fifteen uh, fifty-five countries. But each one of the prefectures that are marked to your left, there's fourteen of them. Each one of them grows about a billion pounds of food a year. Never stop producing it, and they're so crazy. They actually put pictures in the media, Japan's media. That's that's one of many pictures of farmers harvesting food alongside of one-ton bags, and the media is scorning scor scorning people for claiming it's radioactive when it's obviously radioactive. Fifty-five countries banned the food for fourteen prefectures, not just Fukushima, for a decade. They're growing food right alongside of one-ton bags of radiation. And nobody's upset. I can't wrap my fucking mind around that. Apologize for the language, but I can't wrap my mind around how the world can sit in silence. I can't wrap my mind around it. I can't comprehend that. How you can sit in silence? Since Japan began discharging the advanced liquid processing system, treated. Water from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disease factory into the sea on the twenty fourth of August. So to suggest that nothing got out of these buildings until August the twenty fourth of this year is almost too much to bear. And that that narrative can't exist with facts. So the International Atomic Energy Agency is in charge of making sure that, and they're the ones who's claiming that nothing got out. That nothing ever got out of these buildings, only what's in the tanks. The 
Despite growing concerns, officials of Cambodia Ministry of Commerce have said the government has no principle to impose a ban on Japanese seafood. Well, seafood is the last thing you should worry about. You should be worried about the endless 30 million one-ton bags and the endless radioactive fallout to cover the entire country. They noted that the water to be discharged the water that had been purified by the Alps service and then diluted with seawater. You can't, and, I'll, and I'll show you the, the Alps system at the end of this, but there is no Alps system. In 2014, that didn't work. In 2014, uh, in August, I believe it was, three and a half years later, the Areva system was the same, exact same system as the Alps, which is French system, was never used. Same as the Areva system. And same thing with the series system for the cesium-137. That never, that can't work because your filters are so radioactive you can never get in the building again within the first half an hour. So the, the International Atomic Energy Agency is going to monitor it and review the plans. So they're going to, the International Atomic Energy Agency is the ones that are claiming nothing got out of the buildings when everything is gone from the buildings. And the world is sitting in silence where we lose our only opportunity for a future for the species and humanity. And in invoking the word tritium, which you can't even find the single for tritium because it's drowned out by uranium, plutonium, and americium, neptunium, curium, and all the other isotopes. They'll drown out that single. You can't find that on the equipment because the other singles are so strong and there's so much of it. And there's tons of tritium, but that's the last one you're worried about. But you should worry about it, but it's the last one out of the thousand fission products because it all got out. That's why they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. And that's why the food was banned in 14 prefectures, half the country. That's half the country. Look at it. Because they're the, prefe the big prefectures. All the results show this was not detected even after discharging the Alps treated water. So they're claiming that even after they discharged the water, there was nothing detected undergoing the IAEA review. You know, the government will continue to undergo the International Atomic Energy Agency review. The Inter International Atomic Energy Agency said nothing got out of the buildings. But uh, the reality of it is, everything got out of the building. There's nothing left there. The building should have been, what is ever left there, should have been razed all the way to the ground. That's... It's just common sense, isn't it? Jeez, I'm still busted up today. We got the research in, and I decided to do a nuclear cycle tonight because New Scale is on the fence, and they're losing the match. And what they done was so evil, and they stopped all these uh, communities and states and everything for coming up with solutions by getting their pipe dream, the small modular reactors, taking the money, investing in something they knew wasn't going to happen. So th there was a lot of kickbacks took place for that to actually happen in the first place. It's a scumbag industry. It'll destroy everything to make their dollars. That's all they know how to do. They're only good at destroying. They're not good at actually creating anything. And he built all the tanks in 2013. I'm going to walk you through that little part. So the ELP system, in 2014, TEPCO is unable to bring contaminated water issues under control. So this is three years later, three years, one month later. The advanced liquid processing system, ELPS, is yet to function reliably. No, no. It has yet to function. The problem with it is, as soon as they turned it on, everything was so radioactive, you couldn't step over the hoses. There were lethal doses. It was 2.2 sievers per liter of just beta that they acknowledged. And three and a half years later, in August of 12, 2014, the French Areva system was unused and kept out of operation. The, the Siri system 
and the Korean system didn't work. After what has passed through the crippled units, processed through the series system. The crippled units, these are nuclear meltdowns, not crippled units. And other systems designed to remove other radioactive material is overwhelmed by the complexity and concentration of contaminated water found in Fukushima Daiichi. The plant had already released enormous amounts of highly contaminated water directly into the ocean from a plethora of leaks from the reactor buildings. That the ice wall didn't work. It didn't stop the water. That the ice fence didn't work. That I'm sorry, the fence didn't work to divert the water away. That the bypass operations, that nothing they'd done had ever worked. France has decided on eight more nuclear reactors by the end of 2026. Well, I thought that was already decided upon. I thought that was already written in stone. Right, we covered that story earlier, which should have been just before this story. My apologies, that is not. I was concentrated on putting together the headlines from the other from this week that we had already covered on the new scale because the investors are suing them and that's we need to tell that part of the story so that's why I started the video off the way I did to cover how other countries now are going to pick up the Ponzi scale at the same time as the new scale stops the production and that the investors walked away anybody really think that's a coincidence that's unbelievable coordination. And they've done this before, obviously. France will decide by the end of 2026, one month before the elections. Because it's a huge amount of people, and, and they're all the inbreeds, key positions in the government. Their children work in the nuclear industry. And so Macron is not going to make the decision until one month before the presidential elections. Do you got any idea what how scumbags these people actually are? So it's planning on building six, but it's not really building the six. It contracted another entity to build some of the structures, but not the actual reactors. It's meant to employ a couple of hundred thousand people and their children in the nuclear industry, see? Right, to get another 10 years out of it by doing this. Emmanuel Macron has already said that France could build as many as 14 new reactors by 2050. Yeah, they could, but why would you when you can do geothermal and, and there's other incredible amount of other opportunities that are way better than nuclear. Nuclear is only 5% at best efficient for energy. As a new reactor by 2050 is part of the country's plan to become carbon neutral. Nuclear is not carbon neutral. By the way, carbon don't make plumes covering the planet in 20 days. And that carbon plumes that might go 50 miles don't pulse energy at the speed of light every second for millions of years. And carbon, of course, is great for plants and trees and humans and birds and insects and animals and bacteria and fungus and the ecosystem. Unveiled in a government document Wednesday would be just months before the next presidential election. Macron is pushing for more nuclear power plants to extend the lifetime existing ones, which are all destroyed by corrosion, I might add, and that over 10 of their current reactors are shut down because of corrosion. And they're trading, training uh, people with no skills to be welders because the welders can only last a short time because there's so much radiation from the reactors. There, it's a despicable industry. And moved economy away from fossil fuels. Well, every nuclear power plant needs two fossil fuels to run it, to build it, to run it, and to decommission it. Dedicated, great, big, huge, massive coal, gas, and oil plants. Just get rid of nuclear and use the gas, oil, and coal. Nuclear is all about 
making plutonium, the, the fuel cycle. The fuel has to go through a cycle for 18 months, and then you can extract weapons-grade uh, plutonium from it and uranium. France's uh, Paulo nuclear power plant is offline. Oh, look at that, surrounded by farms. Gee, what's, what's the odds? Every one of the French plants is surrounded by farms. And that's the only one was left that was working out of the four reactors. The other three are broken. The biggest Ponzi scam on the entire planet is nuclear industry, nuclear stocks, nuclear investments, and particularly the small modular reactors. They're the most dangerous thing on the planet combined. You know, 30 million one-ton bags. Go down and mark it on every one of those bags Damon is wrong. Go down there and stand on the building and say that the fuel pool is intact, like Arnie Gunnarsson. You know, the building's detonated. These are meltdowns. The plumes, models, all are 20 to 25 days or so. They cover the entire planet, every model. And every academic on the entire planet... When they seen reactor three, they, which was the mixed oxide fuel, that's the one that blew up like that. There's two of them where they got the, the actual documentation of them blown up. For some reason, we don't have the other two. When the same cameras took the other two, the first two, it's from 30 miles away. So those, those videos exist. They decided not to show them to you. Number four and number two. Here they are claiming there's 60 million one-ton bags. There's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil that's being stored, planned to be stored, outside the Fukushima Daiichi perimeter fence. So, so they're talking about 60 million. Well, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags, they admit that. You got all these people pretending they're in the building. That's reactor four. That's the four sides of reactor four to your left. The fuel pools in the reactor cores were at the top of the building. So when they level it down, every nuclear scientist, by the way, had seen that knew they were gone. Every nuclear scientist looked at these two buildings, immediately knew the reactors and the fuel pools were gone. These journalists are not pretending they're in the fuel pool for something to do. They know it's gone. Arnie Gunnarsson made the racks for the assemblies. He knows they're gone. But he's promoting the picture that I got behind him, not the real building to the right. And every journalist out there has done that to you. Every academic on the entire planet, when they looked at Reactor 3, that's the original picture of Reactor 3, they knew the fuel pool was gone. They knew the reactor core was gone. It was not absolutely a single academic on the entire planet that didn't know it was gone. It wasn't gone. And that these two buildings are not as tall as the bottom piece of reactor one um, framing for the Kevlar sarcophagus. So that part right there is th that part up there. So that part up there is only the bottom part, just four parts. That bottom part, if you took both of these re reactor three and reactor four stumps and stacked them on top of each other, are still not as tall as the bottom part. And that the fuel pools are at the top of the buildings. So they're gone, period. Right there at the top of the building. And reactor one, they're not building all this contraption. They built it off site, brought it in, assembled it, but they know the fuel pool's gone. There's, like the industry is not delusional. The industry knows the fuel pools are gone. That's that's. So we've also done six years from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska, and the arrows only meant to show you roughly the places where the research, where I've done the research to, right? Well, we got the big one up. And we've hit this from every direction Thank conceivable. You. I've hit this multiple year after year after year. 
And because we had the documentation of the fallout, we had the actual evidence of the fallout. And what we discovered was the pictures to your left, that's the extinction event. We know this because we've done the whole coastline. I've done it year after year after year, four to five months at a time. That's what nuclear does, look. It exterminates all the life. We went back year after year. The species didn't recover. They didn't come back. And uh, I've done everything from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska, four to five months a year without coming home. And I can guarantee you, now, we've done it just in the hopes that the species did come back, but the species didn't come back. So the pictures to your left is what it should look like. And the pictures to your right, there's, instead of being 700 algaes and all these species to your left, there's nothing left there for the birds. There's no... There's no... Um, there's nothing left because the fallout covered the whole planet in 20 to 30 days. And... I can guarantee you the government and nuclear industry is well aware of it. And for doing that, I was demonized and vilified and smeared and attacked relentlessly too. And I couldn't defend myself because I'm on the ocean four to five months a year. And I'm still going strong because the truth has to prevail. Common sense would dictate that the truth would have to prevail. But I went there year after year. You shouldn't be able to land on these beaches. There should be too many sea urchin spines to go ashore, see? And I took my time and meandered. There's 27,000 islands. And you're talking about 480 species of worms in the tidal zones. You're talking about 74 species of starfish. And each species comes in serious, vibrant colors. You're talking about I mean, typically, that's what... You see all the starfish to your left? That's a normal sight for me. I'm used to that. That's exterminated. There's, uh, does you see the, the red sea anemones there? Each species... There's around 78 species of sea anemones. Each species comes in vibrant colors, different colors. You see the shellfish? There's all kinds of clams and razorback clams and, and what's known as gooey ducks and abalones, and scallops, and, um, and just the normal clams. There's uh, manilas, and little necks, and razorback. There was around 700 algae, kelps. Uh, amongst that was 5,500 invertebrates without the backbones, like little shrimps that were identified. It was incredible. And these are tropical rainforests. It was a magic. And the species now are completely wiped out post-Fukushima. They were there, and then they're not. You know, there's 865,000 extra cancers in the first year, but there's heart problems, liver problems, lung problems, respiratory, and pituitary, thyroid, and adrenaline. There's all kinds of diseases and illnesses besides cancer. So extra 865,000 cancers in the first year. They have a street there where seven people dropped dead in one year. Remember, all nuclear power plants worldwide are surrounded by farms. They actually hate your guts. They hate you. And uh, it's hard to comprehend how much they actually hate you, but they hate you. They, all these farms are not surrounded, or all these nuclear plants are not surrounded by farms because they made a simple mistake. No. They've done that because they hate your guts. They have the utmost contempt for you. That's why all these nuclear power plants... And now the whole planet is covered in radioactive fallout. It's really... Um, a million to ten million times of cesium-137 in the air per cubic meter of air. Uh, this is Francis' study. And 11 back was a kilogram. It's cesium the children will start to see heart problems. 50 buckles with permanent heart problems. And just inhaling one hot particle can cause a cancer. But your immune system is compromised and you're attacking that atom that's in your body, the hot particle, for the rest of your life with white blood cells. There's an instant cause and effect. 
And every nuclear power plant is hemorrhaging radiation into the environment. That's why they're surrounded by farms. Their fuel pools have no containment. That's the big dirty secret. That's why I'm censored. That's why if you found me, it was a, someone must have told you because I am censored. And this video is over. Go check the front page and I'll be lucky if I have 10 views, despite the fact I might have 20 or 30 uh, votes on the poll and I might have 20 or 30 thumbs up. As of once uh, the story broke, the new scale Ponzi scam was uncovered, the only people that are really talking about it is me. So they got no options but to censor me because you got a thousand public relation firms, they got nobody to attack. And so I'm under siege constantly. It's an industry whose time should never have come. They should never exist. Their entire legacy is predicated upon deceit, dishonesty, and genocide, an omnicide against all species. And the minute you start having a conversation is the minute they go hide. Because these people cannot exist when you shine a light on them. And that's what we try to do here. And I'm under siege. I'm, I'm attacked. I'm denied. I'm vilified and smeared. Go look my name up and you'll find nothing but people attacking me. But if you watch my presentations, you'll realize I'm actually just... Uh, a normal everyday person trying to share the information with you. I'm completely honest and completely open, and I provide you all the documentation for my assertions. I don't do it because it's easy, because I can guarantee you this, what I'm doing is not easy. I done eight takes before I got this show running. Eight takes. Some of them are 10 minutes long. I'm doing this because you deserve to hear another narrative besides the propaganda that they've been feeding you for 80 years. And their story cannot stand up against the documentation I provide you. Have a great night. Have a great day tomorrow. Hopefully I'm back Sunday. And um, and we had uh, Stephen Young donated 50. James Hans, uh, James Lucid donated another 130 for this expedition and Ron E donated uh, 25 dollars for this expedition that covers some of the expenses and what we discovered was the birds and the species are missing in our forests are forests are silent and this is due to a major pulse event in 2011 from Japan but also 80 years of perpetual emissions from the industry the Fukushima was a pulse event and now it's started the sudden downward slide of humanity in the 8 million species. And it's a catastrophic event for the last 12 years. If you go to the nuclearproctologist.org, you quite quickly realize that this industry is nobody's friend, not even their own. Have a great night. Hugs for everybody. I hope you can see everybody on Sunday night. Uh, the video is going to be censored, so please try to share. Please. Um, Email this out to bloggers and, and other organizations. Take care, folks. <laughs>